Bueno, hola a todos, eh, socios tanto de Build Smart Spain como de Build Smart Portugal y bienvenidos a este webinar sobre enriquecimiento de IFC mediante el Build Smart Data Dictionary eh, que corre a cargo de, de Frederick Grant, ¿vale? ahora, ahora lo presentaremos. Eh, os dejo con David Delgado que os va a bueno, pues introducir un poco el webinar y que será un poco el que haga de, de, de guionista de, de la sesión. Adelante, David. Gracias, Sergio. Um... Hola a todos, buenos días, buenas tardes eh, y bienvenidos a este nuevo webinar técnico uh, titulado Enriquecimiento de IFC mediante Building Smart Data Dictionary. Uh, bueno, esto simplemente es un disclaimer uh, para trasladar el código ético y de, de conducta de la, de la asociación uh, cada vez que hacemos algún tipo de, de webinar como este. Uh, recordar a quienes pues, no hayan asistido a, a ninguno que esto es una serie de webinars uh, hosteados por, por Building Smart, que es una asociación abierta, neutral, sin ánimo de lucro y de ámbito uh, también internacional. Y simplemente para dar un poco de contexto a este webinar técnico, uh, y seguramente muchos de vosotros ya habéis asistido a algunos de los anteriores, este es el tercer webinar técnico de cuatro previstos durante este 2024. Uh, empezamos por uno um, relacionado con uno de los servicios de Building Smart, Use Case Management, Uh, que se celebró en abril y que podéis consultar también en nuestro YouTube. Uh, luego otro antes uh, de las vacaciones, definición avanzada de requisitos uh, mediante IDS y el que nos uh, compete hoy, que es el de enriquecimiento de IFC mediante BSD. Tenemos otro previsto, uh, con unas fechas aún por cerrar, pero que seguramente será para finales de noviembre-diciembre, uh, y un poco para cerrar este ciclo, en este caso de uh, servicios y estándares de uh, Building Smart International, Uh, pues trataremos el tema del servicio de validación, que precisamente recientemente pues, ha, ha también ha sufrido alguna actualización eh, y avance. Pues bueno, sin más, eh, esta es la agenda que tenemos para hoy, la bienvenida que os ha dado Sergio y que uh, uh, de alguna forma continúo y ya seguidamente pues, uh, entraremos con la sesión uh, que tiene un poco esta estructura. Primero daremos uh, una visión general de uh, Building Smart Data Dictionary con unos básicos, Uh, lo pondremos en contexto con el ecosistema de uh, el concepto en sí mismo de los diccionarios de datos. Uh, Frederic nos dará un muy buen ejemplo y pasaremos a, a la parte demostrativa en vivo de cómo este ciclo uh, puede acabar enriqueciendo nuestros uh, modelos de información. Y nada, uh, sin más, os presento a Frederic Grant. Uh, actualmente es director de la unidad de negocio de CoBuilder. Uh, es un experto en BIM uh, y uh, de toda la industria de la construcción. Uh, anteriormente había sido también director arquitecto de datos BIM um, y gerente de producto precisamente de Building Smart Data Dictionary. Um, y nada, destaca uh, en temas de transformación digital y estandarización de datos desde ya hace muchos años. Y su liderazgo en uh, gestión de proyectos de innovación técnica uh, pues proviene de, uh, de su bagaje uh, fundando distintas empresas e incluso pues Um, uh, uh, gerenciando pues, uh, el propio Cobilder en este caso en el ámbito francés. Así que nada, Frederic, uh, bienvenido, muchas gracias por estar aquí y espero que sea muy interesante todo lo que nos compartirás. Una cosilla, David, solo comentar una, una bueno, sí, dos sí. cosas muy rápidas. Una, eh, la presentación va a ser en inglés, ¿vale? Aunque es un inglés afrancesado, lo cual hace que lo entendamos mejor. Ese toque distintivo. <risas> Creo que lo entendemos mejor, nos hace pensar que sabemos más inglés. Y la segunda, que, que después de, de la presentación de Federica habrá un turno de preguntas, ¿vale? Con lo cual, eh, bueno, pues cualquier pregunta la podéis ir dejando en, en el chat o en la parte de preguntas y tal, y al final, pues las, las atenderemos, ¿vale? Con lo cual, Federic, it's your turn. That's ok. Yes. Uh, uh, muchas gracias. Uh... Hola, this will be the only thing I will say in Spanish. I'm really sorry I cannot afford to, to make this one in Spanish, but uh, I'm really, really not good. Um, so again, apologize for this. Uh, whatever, I can also do it in French if you wish, but I'm not sure if this will be better. Um, so our subject today is uh, to talk about IFC, Building Smart Data Dictionary, data dictionaries in general and how to have real use case in real life around those uh, those topics um 
very quickly, um, because that's not our subject, but I'm working for a company which is a Norwegian company uh, where we work on digital solution uh, for the construction industry, value chain, and we are very, very involved in building smart, of course, and in transition processes around sense and ELEC and ISO standards. Um, so the agenda, uh, David already uh, told you, so I will uh, not lose time on this one, but we will quickly start talking about what is BSDD, what can be uh, expected from it. Then in more general, Ecosistema de los Diccionarios de Dados, um, which where we will talk about other data dictionary tools and what are the connections between them. Then we will see what to do with this, and then we will uh, try to have enough time uh, to manage around questions. So first topic is uh, what is a building smart data dictionary? And before telling you what is a building smart data dictionary, I would like to talk a bit more about data dictionary in general. So what shall I expect as uh, someone is a, in the construction industry from a data dictionary? What I would expect is to be able to find out what is a window, what is a beam, what is a boiler? And by using a data dictionary, I would be able to know that a boiler, um, well, it has a code, it has an identifier, and this is really important because this boiler can be called boiler in English, can be called Codier in French, can be called another word in German, in Spanish, I'm not sure about it, so I will not try it, but whatever. It can have many, many, many names and many definitions in many language, but it will have only one digital name, which is this identifier, URI, that will be used in IFC model, in IDS, everywhere, so we can know all the time that when you want to know what is a boiler, you just have to go to this URI and you will have this information back. So very, very important that this identifier, then of course, we will have, you will have the definition. Uh, here, uh, my screenshot is in English, but if, uh, and I know Building Smart Spain have been working on translation in BSDD, uh, if you switch to Spanish, then you will know and you will have this information in Spanish. Um, this is made um, upon standards. So all this information is standardized. So you can have a reference document. It can be, this definition can be attached to a standard, to whatever you wish. You will know in which language it has been created. It will have a status, meaning that you will be able, by accessing a data dictionary, to know that uh, the definition of this boiler is active and valid. But it can be also in preview, so meaning that someone has creating this dictionary entry, but has not published it fully yet, so you cannot fully trust it. And of course, you will know exactly when this information has been provided into this data dictionary through this activation date. So many, many information, but first in my data dictionary, I want to know what is a boiler. Well, my data dictionary will explain me. All right, if you want to find this information, this is the address where to go. Uh, this is the name, this is the code, this is the definition, um, and, and so on. So first thing, I want to know what is a boiler. Data dictionary will let me know what is a boiler. Second one is, like in a classical data dictionary, I would say, uh, important to have information about parameters or properties or attributes, whatever is the term you want to use. In my data dictionary, I would like to be able to know what is something called nominal energy consumption. And same, you will have in the data dictionary a set of properties uh, where you will, you will see that nominal energy con consumption, again, it has a code, uh, it has a definition in whatever language you wish, as long as it has been provided into the data dictionary. Same here. It has a URI, this identifier that can be used to access the information. Um, it can have examples, it can have a physical quantity, uh, it can have a reference document, so a standard or a document where it comes from. And uh, very important also, it will have a data type. So I will know that something called nominal energy consumption should be provided with a value which is a float value, in short, a number and not just a text or yes, no, or whatever. So the data dictionary will provide me also this information. So I will know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. The next step is, okay, in a data dictionary, I have information about boilers. Fine, I can understand what is a boiler. I have information about properties, but I will also 
wants to be able to know what are the properties of a boiler. And again, the data dictionary will provide you the capability to connect those classes, because we are talking about classes in BSD, to the right properties. And I will know that a boiler, it has nominal energy consumption, it has heat transfer surface area, etc., etc. So when you will access this boiler into a data dictionary, you will access also to the set of properties that are corresponding to it. And if we take the example of the IFC data dictionary, which is, well, uh, our main topic today, IFC, uh, you will have this list of all objects that are provided by IFC, IFC boiler, IFC pump, IFC wall, uh, IFC window, IFC slab, etc., etc. And for all of those, you will have this relationship. So you will be able to find out that an IFC pump has those properties uh, to describe it. Very important is what is not in a data dictionary. This is not about products. This is not about values. This is only about definitions of terms. So in a data dictionary and so in BSDD, you will never find information about this boiler knowing that his power is 23 kilowatts, uh, this eight is uh, 795, this width is 407, etc. This is another topic. This is product catalog, this is object libraries. It has nothing to do with a data dictionary. So you will never find out values for the properties. This is not the use case of ESDD. So very, very important to, to see that. We are just talking about definition of terms, nothing else. Then we've been talking about IFC data dictionary. And I said, well, this is a data dictionary. You will find classes. You will find properties. You will find the properties attached to a class, all good. But in real life, you don't have one data dictionary. You have several. You will have the ATIM data dictionary, which is mostly dedicated to wholesalers. You will have Uniclass data dictionary, which is mostly a classification system uh, used in UK. You can have CCI, um, which is, again, another classification system according to a standard which is uh, highly used in Europe. And you can have many, 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 many data dictionaries, meaning that you have IFC, ATIM, Uniclass, CCI, uh, dictionary two, three, four, five. And the idea of BSD is to be able to gather all this information and to have a central repository where you have the interconnection of all those data dictionaries and you can find, get, and use the information from all those data dictionaries, which again are interconnected. So in short, we are talking about many data dictionaries and we are talking about a service provided for free by Building Smart International so it will, cost, it will cost you nothing to provide content into BSDD and nothing to use the content from BSDD. This is fully free of charge. The content is published by public organizations, international classification systems, by any companies. As soon as you have a use case for a data dictionary, you can provide it to BSDD and it will be made available um, to the whole community. Um, of course, I told you we are talking about interconnected data dictionary, meaning that you have relationships between all those information. And we reuse in, in all the data dictionary, we try to reuse as much as possible and to interconnect as much as possible the data dictionary, not to reinvent the wheel in all of them. Um, and then from BSDD, the idea is to be able to use this information use those properties, objects coming from those data dictionaries, first to create uh, information requirements. Uh, in a BIM project, you will start by saying, OK, at this phase, I need this actor to provide me for its pump, this information, this information, this information. This can be provided via IDS. I know you already had a webinar on this, so I will not spend time on this one. But then, when you have created those requirements, of course, you need to provide the information that is requested. And you need to find a way to provide this information in your IFCB models. 
So today we will manage to see how those use cases can be applied by using the Building Smart Data Dictionary, the Building Smart Data Dictionary API, uh, and tools around it to make this possible in real life. So all what we will see today is available on the market. So this is not about theory. It will be a real tool that can be really used on the market. Um, just very quickly, uh, broadening the BSDD, so it has a new UI since uh, since some weeks now, where you can find the list of data dictionaries available. You can select IFC, where you will have all the classes, and here you can just access this famous boiler. You will see that it has 223 properties. You can broad them, and you can check, for example, nominal energy consumption and see all the information around it. So very simple search.bsdd.com, uh, access all the data dictionaries throughout this list, or you can directly search whatever you're looking for, an object, a property, and uh, you will have access to it. Uh, maybe uh, easier to have a quick look like this. So here it is, uh, here is BSDD, landing page. So as I told you, search.bsdd.bsdsmart.org. Here you have the mostly uh, popular data dictionaries. So you will see back my IFC 18 uni class and CCI. And here, so what we've seen just right now, if I manage to type it the right way, I will search for boiler and I will see that I will have 300 results for a boiler. And for example, here in the IFC data dictionary, I can see what is a boiler. This here, you will recognize the screenshot that we have seen. Uh, if we have translation, I can translate it. And here is uh, the translation of a boiler in Spanish. As I told you, uh, Building Smart Spain have, has made a lot of efforts to make this available in Spanish. So here we are, name in Spanish, definition in Spanish, um, and all the properties that are corresponding to a boiler. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I wanted to show uh, to show you quickly as a demo. Um, and I will go back to the presentation. Yes, here we go. And then I've explained you what we would expect from a data dictionary. I told you about this is BSDD. This is what's information. We have a lot of interconnected data dictionary, um, but we have other data dictionaries in the world. One of those is called Define, and um, in Define, that's same idea, to be able to interconnect a set of data dictionaries um, and to provide a kind of common language across uh, the construction industry. And uh, in this context, we have a vision of several levels of common language, where you will have the common language objects and properties you use in your day-to-day -day work, in your company. That, that's the first level. You have some kind of information that you are sharing just across your company or across a project, uh, which is the first level. Then you have one level up, which is a common language recognized within a specific market. It could be a country, it could be a region, it could be part of uh, the construction industry, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have, again, one level up, which is international common language, where you have definitions of properties with, that are used everywhere in the world. Um, so that's the way we are structuring data dictionaries in Define. We have this first common language, then ISO standards, industry domain. Then you have national common language with uh, some Spanish standards, for example, some national regulation. And then the next level is uh, your own company uh, language definitions. And Define is just a federation of all those. Uh, and here is an example. Here I'm, I went to the Define website where you can see UK data dictionary, Norwegian, Swedish, woodworking. And an example is uh, some work we have started to do with Portugal where you already have a data dictionary which is available. And uh, I will not dare to pronounce those things, but here you will find all the information about this Portuguese data dictionary with classification, with the EN documents that have been used to create this data dictionary. And you can access this again via this website. This is freely accessible. So you just have to go to, to Define Hub and you will have, have access to, to this information. And you can see that 
pretty similar to what I shown you in BSDD. Objects and properties on this object with information uh, about those. Um, here is a quick example on a work that has been done by um, the Wood European Federation Association. Uh, Wood needed to create uh, its own data dictionary, and for this, they have used Define. So Define is providing a tool where you can manage the content that needs to be provided into the, this data dictionary. So BSDD is a service where you publish this information, but Define also allows you to manage it, to create it, and to, imply, to, to implement some workflows that are coming from international standards. Like not anyone is able to invent the definition of something. It has to be managed by experts and so on. And at the end, it has to be published. So they have done that. They have managed, created their wood uh, data dictionary coming mostly from the EN13986 uh, on wood-based panels. And then they have published it. They have published it as their own data dictionary on their own website. So here I can look for a fiber board. Uh, here we go. I will then see that I have Fiberboard version 8 into this data dictionary on, uh, on this website with, again, its definition, set of properties, uh, which are coming from uh, those standards I've been talking about. Uh, for example, here I will have access to uh, airflow rate according to, again, a standard uh, with its definition and so on, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Here's a reference document. And the beauty of interconnected data dictionary is that same thing is available in BSDD. So if I'm looking for Fiberboard uh, in BSDD, I will have a lot of results in many data dictionary. And here we go. We have industry dictionary for products in wood coming from this association. And if I'm clicking on this Fiberboard, BSDD will provide me exactly the same information with a URI where to find it, some widths of information. And this is exactly the same information than in defined before. So Two data dictionaries, but two different ways of accessing them, but exactly the same information. LCA information, so EPD information. Then uh, if you browse all the properties that are available into BSDD, you will find out exactly the same airflow rate. I guess that's the same one. Let's uh, the animation move a bit. Here we go, airflow rate according to EN12114. Exactly same information with uh, the same identifiers. So dictionary, we have BSDD, which is a repository of a lot of interconnected data dictionaries. Uh, that's a service available for free that can be accessed via API or browsed into their website. Define a way to manage data dictionary, but also uh, to publish them into BSDD for them to be used. And then the idea is to see what we can do without this, because always the question when we are talking about data dictionaries, about BSDD, the question is always, always, always the same. Then what? So this is what we will uh, try to see today, is using those two data dictionaries, repositories or services, define and BSDD, to define information requirements and to create this information uh, to make it available into an IFCB model. Um, so we will take an example, and our example will be a very simple project. Uh, I'm sorry about this. I made it so that's more than simple because I'm not a BIM modeler and I'm very bad at using BIM tools. I mean, authoring BIM tools, uh, but whatever. Um, in my project, I will have a heat pump, and for procurement uh, phase, I want this heat pump to have a set of information coming from an EN standard, which is called 14501. Um, and some information to do some life cycle assessment. Uh, this information is global warming potential, and this should come from BSDD, uh, the LCA data dictionary that is provided from BSDD, and also some information which are provided by the IFC data dictionary in BSDD. So as a client, this is, uh, let's say as a contractor, better, as a contractor, at procurement phase, this is information I want me to be provided uh, so I can find the right product, the, the right input, it pump I want to buy. Um, and 
of course, this has to be provided within an IFC model. So what we will do is first create the requirements from the data dictionaries, create requirements from BDD, create requirements from information coming from Define. Then we will enrich our BIM model. Uh, we will see different ways of doing this. Then we will create an IDS. And finally, we will check that our IFC model is providing the information that has been requested. And this information is um, defined in data dictionaries. So as I told you, very simple project. Uh, I, I did it, but we have a heat pump inside it. And if we select this heat pump, no information on it. That we just know that, that that's an IFC pump. Uh, the fun fact is this is coming from an object library, but whatever, uh, no information, nothing else than this is a heat pump. And step one then will be to create you know, our requirements. And for this, I will use a tool which is called Go build the link. Here we go. I will access it. Uh, and we will create a new project. We will call it Building Smart Spain Webinar. Uh, we will say, well, that's a residential building. Um, here, first thing is to select the classification systems that I want to use. Uh, of course, when I'm working, um, I want to use IFC. That's uh, the first thing for me. Uh, but I will also want to use a Revit classification. I will explain you later on why. Uh, so here I'm looking for classification that are associated to my data dictionary. I will also look for Archicad classification. I should have something, yes. And uh, I will also, and again, that's to show you interconnection of things. I will also use Uniclass. So on the defined side, these are the classification that I want to use. And then I will also want to use some BSDD data dictionaries. So here I'm just using BSDD API to know the list of all the data dictionaries that are available into the BSDD. Of course, I'm using IFC, and I will need, remember, I was talking about LCA, so I will need to use uh, LCA indicators and modules data dictionaries. But here you can see that you have access to 180 data dictionaries. So you will find a lot, a lot of stuff inside those data dictionaries. So here, for my example, I will make it simple. Uh, I have created my project using two BSD data dictionaries and several classification systems into define. Again, I will explain one. And I will say that I'm creating requirements for uh, its pump. So the first thing is to query define. Please let me know what you have as information for it pumps. So I have two its. The first one is coming from define. This is a technical definition. You know, we've been discussing about it. Expecting from a data dictionary to have this, and I will check that, oh, fine. In IFC, this is corresponding to IFC pump. That's good. That's what I want to do. And then it's also classified in Revit, Uniclass, and so on. This is the object I want to use in my project. I will add it immediately. Well, another way to do it would have been to say, I want to know all the dictionary entries which are classified as IFC pump. So in this case, we are looking the other way around, everything that is classified as IFC pump. Here, I'm just using define right now to make it easy. Then we are saying that in my project, there is just one phase, which is procurement, right? So I oh, if I type it with the right letters, better. So here I will say that in my project, I have just one phase. Of course, I can have, uh, I can have others like uh, advanced design, basic design, concept design, et cetera, construction phase, whatever. This is the list of all the phases in my project. Then I can have purposes like LCA, like uh, um, 
asset procurement, like acoustic analysis, et cetera, et cetera. I can have as many uh, use cases I want to have in my project. I will have actors that are in charge of providing information. And I can have a set of documents like in my project, I will need to have B models provided as IFC files. All right, so this is my shopping list for my project. Easy project, only object I want to use is heat pump. I have uh, several phases in my project. I have several use cases I want to address and I want to have B models in IFC. Then I will start to create my requirements. And this is where we will have real requirements, not something coming from your head or an Excel file that is reused and we don't know really uh, where the information is coming from. Here, I will create my requirements from data dictionaries. So I will, uh, I will create a new level of information need. Uh, here, I will say that this is for procurement. If you remember, that was the plan and I'm creating my requirements on a hit pump. Here we go. What are the properties that I want to, to have from a heat pump? I will start with define data dictionary. And again, here, we don't care about which data dictionary we want to use. For the tool, same. Those dictionaries are using the same standards, so we can access information from several places. Um, so here, I will use define for the stuff which that is coming from European standards, because that's mainly as a use case with define that's to have objects and properties coming from European and ISO standards. First thing is I may use uh, AI. So Link will tell me, well, you are using a heat pump and for procurement, we think that those properties may be relevant for you. So the first way is to use those AI suggestion or to ask directly, well, what are the properties of a heat pump which are corresponding to this standard? And I will here find back a uh, set of information corresponding to this EN standard. And of course, for each of those properties, I will be able to check the definition, the data type, and if uh, there is some values corresponding to it. Something that is really interesting, and when I'm talking about interconnection of data dictionary, um, here I will search for conductor. So again, remember, I'm using defined data dictionary. And here I know that there is a property called conductor function in define. If I'm checking the information for this property, here I have the technical definition, I will have the user definition, the corresponding property set, some examples, some units, but here I will also see that this is also available in 2BSDD. And if I'm taking this URI, remember I said this is very important stuff, this URI, here we go, same property, but this time, this is coming from define, from BSDD, sorry, uh, with same definition, same URI, of course, list of possible values, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go back to our um, requirements and I will add those properties into my requirements. So here I can see these uh, 13 properties, something like this coming from define and then I will add properties this time coming from BSDD. Here, I will see that we have selected two data dictionaries and I will search into both data dictionaries. And the first thing was to search for global warming potential. That was the first thing requested. And here, here are the properties coming from BSDD directly. So connected to BSDD API, uh, I will see that those properties are coming from the LCA indicators and modules data dictionary. And if I check now, I will see BSDD dictionary, technical definition, if there is a P set. And again, if I want to check what I'm talking about, I just have to copy this URI. And if I pass it in my browser, I will this time access into BSDD to this property with again, the URI definition and so on. Uh, so, all right, that's the property I want to add. I will add this one and uh, let's add a bit more like uh, this famous conductor function that we were talking about. That's this one. And this time, again, we are not using one data dictionary, interconnected data dictionary. So this one will come from, DeFi, from uh, the IFC data dictionary and same, I can find out the information and the possible values according to it. All right, conductor is the first one, and then the last one will be number of balls. That was the other one requested. 
here it is coming again from the IFC data dictionary to BSDD. All right, I add it, save, and I have created my bunch of requirements for procurement. It pumps should be classified as IFC pump and should have this list of properties. Here we go, I have created my requirements and then I can start using them. Let's go back to the presentation and from link, I will be able to export those requirements to something called Autodesk Construction Cloud Parameters. Here, link will connect to your ACC account, so Autodesk Construction Cloud account with your credentials. The idea is to be able to populate the Autodesk data dictionary. So here we are not going to Revit. We are going to populate with information coming from BSDD and from Define. So two different data dictionaries um, from BSDD, one from Define. Here we are pushing this information when we will be connected. All right, we, uh, we agree that link access our Autodesk account. And then we are pushing those properties into this Autodesk data dictionary. And then it will end in my Autodesk account. Uh, again, those properties coming from the two different data dictionaries or three different, two in BSDD, one in Define. And this will end into my Autodesk data dictionary. That's the way I like to call it. It's called parameters library, but that's exactly this. And thanks to the relationship between the object and Revit, you remember I chosen Revit classification, I will be able uh, to have those parameters in my Autodesk account. And I think in this example, uh, only the first two has been pushed. It's loading and you will see back in a second. Here, some properties coming from link like external pressure and cooling mode rating for a heat pump into my Autodesk data dictionary. Next step then will be in Revit to access this Autodesk data dictionary, select the properties coming from BSDD, add them to my Revit model, and all my heat pumps in my Revit model will be enriched with this content coming from the data dictionaries. So now if I'm selecting my heat pump, same project, and I edit the family, I will um, open the family window, here it is, and it will be enriched uh, with the right properties coming from BSDD and or Define. Then the next step, here they are, that's the properties coming from the data dictionaries available in Revit immediately. So the next step then will be in Revit to export my model as an IFC file, but very important, I will have to provide also a configuration file for the property set. So the right properties are ending into the right property set. So configuration file, and then I'm from BSDD and Define going to Autodesk Data Dictionary to my Revit B model, then able to export the IFC with the properties that are coming from the dictionary. Second case is this time that Archicad here, again, same project, you will access to uh, could be the plugin in this case that will give you access to uh, data dictionaries. Here, I don't enrich the pump because there is no pump into the data dictionary, but I will select a window. And again, I will have access like we did in link to all the properties that are available for carbon footprint measurement or procurement. And I will just have to select the right properties and push them into my Archicad model then they will be exported in the right preset in my IFC model. So I'm just selecting here some properties for carbon footprint measurement, some properties for procurement. They should pop up, here they are. And so again, properties coming from standards in this case, uh, adding them into my model. I can see the right properties depending on the use case, carbon footprint or procurement. Then I will say those properties, all of those, I want to attach them to, in this case, that's a bit different. And that's the only time we will talk about Windows today. I will attach them to Window in Archicad. And when I will click Add, then if I'm going to a window, my BIM model is enriched with the carbon footprint measurement properties and procurement properties. So here, if I'm scrolling down um, this window, 
I will, and it will be the case for all the windows of my project, I will find out the properties for carbon footprint measurement and procurement. And again, this is coming from the data dictionary. I have requirements on those. I use a data dictionary and I can enrich my BIM model with the right properties and just have to export an IFC model. Next uh, use case is we are back to co build the leak uh, with our list of requirements. That's the one we created together a bit earlier. Uh, this is a list of properties. I will just say I want to enrich an IFC model. And in this case, I will just upload uh, an IFC file, not the enrich one. Yes, uh, original one that I showed you before and just click Enrich. And in fact, Linked will check into the IFC model all the IFC entities that are IFC pump because I'm, I have requirements on each pump as IFC pumps and we'll check if the properties are available and in the right P-sets. If that's not the case, he will populate the IFC models uh, with the P-sets and the properties coming from the SDD and from Define. Um, very quickly, uh, it's also possible, of course, to export an IDS file made on top of those data dictionaries. So p -sets LCA indicators in LCA BSDD, uh, p -set electrical device command from IFC, and a specific p -set for EN properties. Just clicking export IDS, and uh, well, link will provide you this IDS file with, again, requirements on properties coming from BSDD and or define. And here you will see that we are requesting for an IFC pump to have global warming potential total. And here you have back this URI. So in this IDS file, you keep track of the data dictionary and you can just select this, take it, copy in your brother, and you will access the information coming from BSDD. So all those requirements are with a link to the right data dictionary. So you can keep track of the information you want to use. All right, so let's have a look at the final IFC model. And here may be easier to see it live. So I will hide the roof. Here we go. I will try to, uh, where is my it pump? Here it is, selecting it. Yes, IFC pump. You remember when we have seen this IFC file at the beginning, um, it was kind of naked without any information here you can see that we have those three property sets that have appeared into my IFC model. It could come from the Revit enrichment via the Autodesk Data Dictionary. It could come from the Archicad enrichment. It could come from the link enrichment. Here we have conductor function, number of poles, LC indicators, GWP total, and all those properties coming uh, from this European standard to describe heat pumps. All those have been created according um, to, the, to the data dictionaries, BSD and or define. And again, we are keeping track of uh, those URIs so you can find out the information back uh, to the data dictionary. And of course, the final step will be to be able to check that your IT file is containing in the right PSET, so LC indicators, EN14511 and electrical device common, the right properties. Here in link, we just have to upload the IFC file uh, and we will upload the enrich one. And to click check, this will use the IFC OpenShell uh, library and will provide me um, a report where I will know that in this model, my heat pump is valid except for conductor function because it has been enriched only with the properties. And in this case, the requirements was to have conductor function with one of the enumerated values. So that's why this one is not valid, um, but everything else has been populated via BSDD and or define uh, to fit and to fill the requirements that are coming from the contractor. So that's kind of, of uh, closing the loop. I have data dictionaries where I have created information for IFC, for LCA, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I have created requirements by using them, and I have enriched IFC BIM models with several possibilities, Revit, Archicad, Link. I'm able to check those BIM models against IDS, and all the time I'm keeping track of this information via those URIs that give me access to the definition of the object and the properties into BSDD and or in different. And 
muchas gracias. And uh, if tienes preguntas, uh, time for those. And I guess I will give the floor back to, to you, David, to, to manage um, the end of the webinar. Hope this is uh, a bit more clear what can be done around ESDD data dictionaries and, uh, and IFC, but uh, yeah, open for questions. Thank you, Frederic. Uh, it's been wonderful. I think you've shown the whole circle. Uh, let's see. And the good thing is what you said in the beginning that it's um, this is something that it's already available. Uh, it's uh, something that the industry um, uh, can start using it. Uh, and this is, I think, one wonderful wonderful news. Um, we have. Our first uh, question, I uh, have also some of them and maybe Sergio uh, or someone else. Uh, the first question is, um, is IFC 4.3 uh, for infrastructure available in CoBuilder? Yes. Okay. That's an easy uh, one. <laughs> exactly. This is what, what I would like, not, not from CoBuilder, but uh, I would just add that in the end, in building a smart data dictionary, uh, the only Currently mm, available version is IFC 4.3 um, at, at this time. Uh, but yeah. But this will uh, this will of course evolve, of course. Be, yes, yes. It will be expanded. <laughs> and I don't know, Sergio, if you have some uh, I I, uh, I, I have one question for Frederick. So um I've seen that some companies have aided their own dictionaries to build a smart data dictionary. Maybe their own property sets or their own classification systems. So um, do you think that's an interesting way for, for some companies, maybe are for big companies, I don't know, big contractors or big engineering firms to, to why to upload these internal classification systems or internal um, property sets to build a smart data dictionary. It will help for them after that to, to manage their models, for example? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, IFC is great in building smart data dictionary, but IFC is not covering everything. And many companies, they have their own definitions, their own properties they need to work with and to share with other peoples. Um, so in this case, yes, that's very useful to have your own data dictionary um, and being able to use it. And as you've seen in a tool like Kobe Link, but Kobe Link is one tool that is coming from Kobe. So that's the one I show, but you have other tools on the market, of course, that will do the same, sure. uh, where you will access information from many data dictionaries and you will be able to kind of model what you need exactly and push it into your IFC model. So uh, it makes sense. Um, if I'm taking the same question on the defined side, uh, if you remember, I have a specific slide where, I, where I'm saying we have different levels of common language, which are international, national, then company. So same vision, we think that at company level, there is something that is important for you to be able to use. And B BSDD is filling this gap also, yes. Fantastic. There's another question from Jose Santos. Um, he says, uh, the presentation was very good, <laughs> although uh, quite fast. <laughs> of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of information and content. Um, can we create new parameters uh, to an existing element? Uh, in, for instance, uh, an IFC window at some parameter. Uh, if the question is in BSD, the answer will be no. Uh, because the IFC data dictionary is stating that an IFC window has this set of attributes and this piece set, this piece set, this piece set. But then later on, when going to the way of gathering all those information, uh, as you have seen, my it pump at the end in the IFC model, it had IFC properties coming from preset electrical device common. It had properties coming from the LCA data dictionary in BSDD, which was global warming potential. And it had properties coming from Define, from a European document. Uh, and all those were parameters of the IFC window at the end in my IFC model. So I have enriched the IFC uh, entity with all this information coming from several data dictionaries. So IFC entry point 
I want to use this IFC entity. I have a preset of information, and then I can enrich it by using other data dictionaries coming from BSD, from Define, whatever. But the IFC data dictionary, I'm not allowed to add directly inside it all my parameters. If I would be able to do that, I mean, that's back to the previous question. If any company is creating his own data dictionary, they will then jump into the IFC one and add whatever they wish into the IFC, and we will end with a huge mess. <laughs> uh, to be honest, um, if we are going 10 years back with BSDD, that so previous version of BSDD, old, old one, that was a kind of idea to be able to have one main data dictionary uh, ruling all the world, and it never worked. So we decided to have this interconnection of data dictionaries so you can use several data sources, connect them, knowing that the same thing, and then reach at the end. Great. So re related to, to that, so do you think that that decision to update the Builder Smart Data Dictionary in several <clears throat> interconnected dictionaries instead of only one big one? So do you think that for that decision, now there are more um, tools that are connecting with the API yes. of BSDD? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I've been part of the old BSDD, so I can talk about this really easily. Uh, nobody ever used it. Now, with the new one in this new way, you have many tools connected to the API. You've seen you have more than 190 data dictionaries inside it. Uh, all the software vendors using the API can access all those data dictionary, can connect the dots, uh, can use the relationship. So that's a huge, huge change. I totally agree. Yeah. I think that the fact is to see that the authoring tools are connecting to BSDD. So that's the way to democratize yes. the use of BSDD. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I have, I have a, um, well, a couple, a couple of questions if uh, there's, there's uh, time. Um, one is um, uh, because when you are talking about, just to clarify, maybe for the uh, attendees, but also for me, of course, um, when we are talking about properties, of course, there's the parameter, let's say, but then those properties also could have our values, right? So yes. what about, um, uh, let's say, regulatory, I don't know how to call it, scenarios based on different use cases, um, what, which is the state of the art on that regard? Uh, I don't that's, mean in building smart data dictionary, I mean from the data dictionary perspective in general. That's a very, very, very good question. That's why I was smiling. That's a very good one because I told you, you know, that in a data dictionary, no values. But the standards are stating that for certain properties, you are able to say that these properties is this property is defined to be valid between this range of values. So this is possible to do with BSDD and uh, dictionary tools following this standard. That's possible to say that that's part of the definition of this property to say that this property has a range of values. Um, for example, if I take really simple example, which we could be able to say in the data dictionary that width is a positive value. So it's valid between zero and plus infinite or whatever. That's the first thing. The second one is then we have a risk of misuse of BSDD, trying to create requirements inside BSDD by using this capability. Exactly. So we are kind it, of, yeah. That, 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 that was my background question because uh, there are discussions regarding that and some people is more uh, inclined, let's say, well, and uh, let's not rely on BSDD for that uh, purpose, although somehow could handle it. Uh, let's uh, rely on the vehicle, let's say, uh, which is the idea, right? So those yes. data ranges are defined by somehow yes. the user or even the, who, the, 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 the domain owner, let's say, but using the vehicle, not the uh, house of the data, right? That's exactly what I think also. And if I'm taking my co-builder cap, I would say that this should happen in link, not in BSDD. 
-hmm. and then use the IDS vehicle for it. But it, the data dictionary is ready to handle this kind of information yeah, yeah. for definition purpose, not for, yeah, it can be misused by this, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's another question from Alexandra Rosa. Are the BSDT entities related to existing ontologies? Uh, if so, can uh, we know which ones uh, were used? Um, well, what what do you mean by BSDD entities? Um, exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure. If we have ontologies that are used by BSD, uh, for example, QUDT is used to manage uh, uh, units and this kind of things. Uh, some ontologies has been pushed, uh, have been pushed as data dictionary inside BSD, but not sure exactly about what we mean by BSD entities. Well, maybe Alexandra can clarify it, uh, expanding mm -hmm. the question. And yeah, in the meantime, I had another one, although I, I think that this is maybe easier, but what about uh, BCF integration? Uh, I, I guess that uh, through the use of URIs, somehow uh, we could uh, manage that, right? Uh, although, yes. of course, we can build uh, more complex uh, uh, user interfaces in Define or uh, even within the authoring tools, right? Uh, uh, absolutely. But uh, in my opinion, if we want to connect all the dots, yes, we should at one point be able to have this uh, URIs at least in BCF files. So mm -hmm. we really keep track of the dictionary information everywhere. Updating BCF schema. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yes, I, but this is just a personal feeling. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. <laughs> Wow, fantastic. I think that I don't know if we have some other questions, but we could uh, keep talking here for more than one hour. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yeah, there's oh, another uh, one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I meant the classes. Uh, uh, she meant classes and properties, uh, BSDD entities, as they are defined in an ontology. So uh, the classes in the IFC data dictionary are defined, defined in the ISO IFC standard. Uh, but some ontologies I been, have been pushed, uh, especially uh, from Netherlands people. Um, I will, I, I, we can follow up offline on this, uh, but some of those are coming from ontologies, especially in Netherlands. Uh, I think something coming from OTL, WhatNet. But I, um, I may I may say something wrong. I need to find out. But some are coming, yes, from some ontologies. Um, I, I I can if you can send me an email, I will try to find you the information or to redirect you to the right person for those specific one. But yes, some are coming from some ontologies. Perfect. Thank you, Frederick. So it seems that that's all. I don't know if someone more uh, has a last time question or if not. Um, thank you again, Frederick, for uh, your time and for explaining quite well how BSDV can be very useful for, for the users in order to enrich their models and how can be a solution to companies to upload their own dictionaries too. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. I know this was really too fast because I wanted to show as much as possible. And uh, in a small time, that was a bit fast. But I will provide you, of course, um, the presentation so people can have a look later on. And maybe with the recording, it will be easier. And whatever, if you need uh, anything from me, just let me know. And uh, uh, if we need to go back to a specific topic, it will be a pleasure. But uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Really appreciate it. Okay, that's perfect. We will publish the, the video uh, in a few weeks. So uh, probably some people will be able to, to take a look very slowly and, and mm -hmm. many times in order to see the whole uh, life cycle of the information that, that you have shown. So David, something more? No, no, just uh, appreciate uh, the knowledge from Frederick and also appreciate that uh, it's uh, totally aligned with the current state of the art using the last versions of everything, let's say, uh, what we have in September 2024 about all this. And the good news is that 
companies that are really keen to uh, start using this, they, they, they really can start the, uh, this path, uh, deploying all these new workflows. So this is wonderful news. And yeah, thank you very much again. Okay. Pues muchas gracias a, a todos y, y nos vemos en, en la próxima. Un saludo. Muchas gracias. Adeu. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs>